So I'd like to introduce Anton Lau, uh, who will briefly uh, present uh, work on clearance of latent cy cytomegalovirus in donor lungs using multiplexer gene editing nanoparticles before transplantation. Welcome, um, Anton. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear, Anton. Perfect. Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, cool. Could you guys see my screen? Uh, my poster? Would it be possible for you to zoom in a bit on a, a given portion? If, if yeah, that's, um, I, I don't think I, I've, I've tried. Um, I don't think that was possible, but uh, I will, um, I'll um, have my pointer. So um, I'll, I'll explain it well, hopefully. Um, so for, for, uh, perhaps for the benefit of the audience, I'll also link your poster in the chat so they can follow along there perhaps as you're presenting uh, on the screen. Would that be okay yeah. with you? Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Um, so yeah, um, I'm Anson. Uh, I am from the Con Lab at the Institute of Biomedical Engineering in University of Toronto. And um, I'll be telling you about my project on developing a multiplex gene editing nanoparticles to clear cytomegalovirus in donor lungs before transplantation. So cytomegalovirus or CMV is the most common cause of mortality and morbidity in lung transplant recipients. Um, CMV infection um, in lung transplant is associated with chronic graft versus host disease, um, graft rejection and pneumoniaitis and uh, a, a lot more different um, diseases. And then, so in particular, CMV negative recipients who receives a CMV positive lungs bears the greatest risk in developing CMV related diseases. And it is estimated that up to 50 to 90% of the adult population is infected with CMV. So it is very likely that the donor lung harbors the virus. And so the current um, gold standard treatment is a antiviral therapy uh, to minimize the impact of CMV related diseases. Um, however, they are very toxic and can give rise to CMV drug resistant strains. So gene editing technology like CRISPR-Cas9 here um, offers the possibility to directly target the viral genome to inactivate the virus. So this brings me back to, the, to my question, can we deliver CRISPR-Cas9 to directly target CMV within the donor lung to reduce CMV related transplant diseases? So the current strategy of delivering CRISPR-Cas9 payloads utilizes viral vectors. Um, um, however, viral vectors can trigger immune response, oops, sorry, trigger immune responses, um, um, trigger immune responses, which can then destroy the therapeutic payload, um, has the risk of insertion or mutagenesis, which can potentially cause cancer. Um, it also have a limited payload capacity, which means a multiple separate viral vector is required, um, and it is very costly uh, and limited in large scale um, manufacturing. And so our answer to this is to use our um, high capacity um, um, alkylated polyamine nanoparticles and deliver CRISPR as a RNA payload. So we think our nanoparticle technology will be able to minimize um, immune responses deliver CRISPR as RNA to mitigate any insertional mutagenesis risk, deliver all the necessary CRISPR components within a single nanoparticle, and all while being cost-effective and easily scalable. Um, so our plan is to first design a sgRNA or single guided RNA that effectively targets the essential genes of CMV. And so these genes are chosen because they have been shown to be critical for the virus's replication and reactivation. And the next, we will be um, using our alkylated polyamine nanoparticles and mix it with Cas9 mRNA and multiple different CMV targeting sgRNA that I just mentioned earlier. And they would self-assemble into multiplex nanoparticles. And after using the ex vivo lung perfusion or the EVLP, a platform that keeps the donor lung alive by perfusing important factors. We will perfuse our multiplex nanoparticles in a CMV infected donor lung to see if our nanoparticles can safely and effectively reduce CMV 
within the donor lung. So, so far, our elite alkylated poly nano material have shown to um, efficiently encapsulate Cas9 mRNA and a sgRNA and form stable nanoparticles with low poly dispersity index, as you can see in figure A and figure B. Our nanoparticles here in um, figure 4A in blue uh, was also able to transfect cells in vitro and perform functional gene knockout uh, comparable to transfection, uh, commercially transfection agent lipofectamine in black here. As you can see, both trends are quite similar in figure 4A. Um, however, our cell viability is significantly higher in the nanoparticle treated group um, in blue here, as you can see in figure 4B, suggesting that our nanoparticles are less toxic. So our next step here is to now design sgRNA that can target essential CMV genes, as I mentioned in our methods, and establish a in vitro CMV infection model to test our nanoparticles' ability to attenuate CMV infection and reactivation. And after that, we can begin testing the compatibility of our nanoparticles in the EVLP platform and, and understand the distribution of our nanoparticles within a donor lung model. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'd like to thank Medicine by Design, the Canadian chair, uh, Research Chair Program and the NSERC Discovery Grant for funding this research. I would also like to thank my supervisor, Omar Khan, and my lab members for their help and support. Uh, I'm open to any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anson, for your work and for that brilliant presentation. Um, I don't see any questions also, but please stay online uh, in case there are any. Oh, there's actually one um, by Liz asking what type of virus is cytomegalovirus, the CMV virus. Would you um, want to answer that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, CMV is a DNA virus, a DNA virus that's part of the uh, beta herpes virus group. Um, so um, what characterizes uh, them as a herpes virus is their ability to stay latent within a host once they're infected. Um, so, um, so that's why it is such a pressing issue with transplant, because once the host is infected by the virus, um, their viral genome stays inside the host. Um, and so normally people... Um, so basically, a, a, a huge chunk of the population is infected by this virus, and our immune system does a great job in controlling it. Um, but when uh, during immunocompromised um, situations, like during organ transplant, because um, uh, patients are administered um, um, patients are administered um, immunosuppressant to um, reduce the chances of graft rejection, so that's when cytomegalovirus becomes a huge issue. <clears throat> Thank you, Anson. Um, Liz goes a further, yeah, Liz has a further um, exploratory question asking, is there molecular mimicry from this virus possibly contributing to autoimmunity, such as like, you know, graft versus host um, phenomenon? Uh, yeah, um, that's a good question. I am not um, too familiar with like the very intricate molecular details of the virus. Um, from what I understand is, um, the, the, the immune system and the virus um, has an interplay that controls them being in a latent state, uh, a dormant state. And so um, when, this can, when this balance is lost um, uh, with, the, with immunosuppressant, um, that's when inflammation happens. And, um, and there's like a, a whole lot of um, cell death and a lot of different inflammatory markers that cause all these um, pathologies. Okay, thank you um, for that. Liz also thanks you for, for the brilliant presentation and really cool technology. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, please stay online in case there's any other question um, so that anyone who's curious can be answered. Sure, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.